الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As we just delved into the nights of Ali ibn Abi Talib as the black has been put onto the walls, we realize that we are getting and are in the nights, the holy nights in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes for us our bounties based on our deeds in Layal al-Qadr. And inshallah, as we commemorate the greatest man to walk this earth after the holy prophet of Islam, there's so many different aspects to look at. As we know, Ali ibn Abi Talib is not a normal person. Ali ibn Abi Talib is someone that when people look at within history, their pens and their words, the language falls short of who Ali ibn Abi Talib truly is. As in, we only have that which is very little. As Imam Sadiq says it to us, he says, whatever you have from us, Ahlul Bayt, if you look at the alphabet, you only have a little bit of the first letter. He says you have a little bit of the alif. It's not a complete alif. That's all we have. And with all this that we have, look at what we can look at into the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib has so many dimensions we can look at. Whether it be his generosity, whether it be his closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be his valor, his bravery at war, his fearlessness, or whether it be when you look at Ali ibn Abi Talib in the pulpit and in the mihrab where you look at him and you see him in a teary state, crying, wailing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. So we find, and first and foremost, when we even describe Ali ibn Abi Talib, it's one of the most or the hardest things to do, and especially to give him the significance and the time to analyze this particular figure. So I've, inshallah, tried to look into the lifespan of Ali ibn Abi Talib throughout these holy nights in particular stages. Tonight and tomorrow night, we want to first and foremost analyze the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib in reference with the Prophet of Islam. How was Ali ibn Abi Talib aiding the Prophet of Islam? What did the Prophet of Islam say about Ali ibn Abi Talib and his position? And we're going to look at a particular hadith tonight. And tomorrow we're going to look at in more detail the incident that happened in Ghadir Khum. As we all know, but we want to look at it from a different level. And inshallah, on the upcoming nights, we'll take one night at a time discussing Ali ibn Abi Talib until we reach the 23rd night, in which we will discuss the power entrusted into Ali ibn Abi Talib. So please help me in starting tonight by reciting aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has a statement about Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now we may take many statements that we have in our books, that we have in reference to the Prophet of Islam, but I took a particular hadith that no one can come forth and say, well, we don't believe in this hadith. Because if you look into our books, in the depth of our books, you find that Ali ibn Abi Talib is mentioned in reference to this hadith. If you look at the schools of thought, in other than that of Ahlul Bayt, whether it be of the greatest of the opposition's books, or the most sahih, such as Bukhari, you find this particular hadith. So much so, that if you go towards the Nasibis, and I'm mentioning Ibn Taymiyyah as a Nasibi. You go towards his works, and this particular hadith is mentioned. And he says that this hadith is sahih. That's why I've taken, I've taken this particular hadith, and I want to analyze it, to show you the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now this hadith is in reference to the Prophet in which he states, 
يا علي أنت مني بمنزلة هارون من موسى إلا أنه لا نبي بعدي The translation is the Prophet of Islam is saying to Ali ibn Abi Talib and tomorrow we're going to look at the particular incidents in which the Prophet says it about Ali ibn Abi Talib. But tonight we want to look at the actual saying and the comparison between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Harun in comparison to Musa and the Prophet of Islam. He says, oh Ali, you are to me like Aaron or Harun was to Moses, except that there is no prophet after me. That's the statement we want to look at for tonight. When the prophet comes forth and says this statement about someone that's not his brother, because that's the first comparison. Harun and Musa were brothers, blood brothers. That's the first comparison. Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Prophet of Islam weren't blood brothers, they were cousins. Now how is it that we can take the comparison that the Prophet says this about Ali ibn Abi Talib? Now the first reply to this is what? First of all, the Prophet of Islam is saying it. So it can't be falsified, can it? The second is if it goes hand in hand with Ali ibn Abi Talib's statement. In the covenant that he gives towards Malik al-Ashtar, he says, O oh Malik, people are of two types, isn't it? Either your brother in faith or your equal in humanity. The Prophet says to Ali ibn Abi Talib, you are my brother. You are to me like Aaron was to Moses. Let's look at the aspect of brotherhood. That's the first aspect we want to look at. The aspect of brotherhood. Someone, someone may come forward and say, this is the hadith is the only thing that you can prove that the Prophet and Ali ibn Talib were referred to as brothers. On the contrary, we have so many others. Hadith al-Kisa, you go and read it. Akhi wa ibn Ammi, isn't it? He refers to Ali ibn Talib. But I want to take two particular examples that are narrated not just in our books, in other books. When the Prophet of Islam begins his journey and he brings his knee ones, his companion, his, his, his knee family members, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, first, deliver this message to your knee ones. Wonder ashiratikal. Your close ones, your new ones. So he gathers his family. And he says this statement. He says, whomever will be first to come with me and aid me on this journey will be my brother and successor. Will be my brother and successor. So that's the first instance that happened in Makkah. When he goes towards Medina, who narrates this? Umar ibn al-Khattab narrates this. He says, I saw Ali ibn Abi Talib cry on that day. Why Ali ibn Abi Talib is crying? He says when he migrated, he took a muhajir and an ansar and he put the, the, their hands in one another. Akha, baynahuma. He says except for Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Ali saw this particular instance and Ali was saddened. The Prophet goes to him and he says, Ali, why are you saddened? He says because you have made the brothers between the muhajirin and the ansar, yet you have not given anyone that I may help. Because they had to help one another. The Prophet comes with this statement. And remember who says this. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrates this. He says, Oh Ali, no one else will be your brother. And no one will be my brother. Except you and I. You are my brother in this, he in this world and the hereafter. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala The first instance of brotherhood, there's more depth to it, but as a very, very basic level. The second of which he says, Aaron was to me like, uh, Ali is to me like Harun was to Musa. The comparison here and the when we look at the definition, when people try to explain this in other schools of thought, they say, yes, they were brothers, they were close, but let's look at it in more depth. And we'll look at it especially in the depth, which is Khilafah tomorrow. Harun, who was he to Musa in the comparison of Khilafat? Harun died before Musa. Harun was Musa's successor. If Musa died, Harun was the next in charge. They were both prophets. One succeeded the other. Musa, his successor was Harun. Therefore, when the Prophet of Islam comes and he says, you are to me like Aaron was to Moses. It's saying that you are after me, the, the successor, the Khalifa 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Not the Khalifa that we find nowadays that you say this was the first, the second, the third, took the pulpit. No. The Khalifa of Allah is the Imam. It's totally different. The Khalifa to them is a person that sits on the chair and has the rulings. We're talking about the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Because people might differentiate and may not differentiate between the Khilafah and the Imam. The Khilafah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Khalifa that people choose. As we know the difference was, the second Khalifa once, he heard someone cursing him, saying ill things about him. He had him whipped. We've mentioned this example, but let's look at it, the difference. He had him whipped because he spoke ill of him. Ali ibn Abi Talib on the, on the second hand, who goes past the mosques that his name was being cursed in the Adhan. As we know, Muawiyah instilled this. Until 70 years after, some say 77 years after, on the pulpit, Ali ibn Abi Talib was cursed. Ali hears this. Look at the difference. The second Khalifa whips the person. Ali ibn Abi Talib hears this. And he says, may Allah forgive them. The Christian man has given us this analogy. And he says, this is the difference between the Khalifa that people has, have chosen and the Khalifa that Allah has handpicked. That's the difference. He says, look at that. Such a simple aspect to us, but what, what a magnanimous effect it had on society up until now. That's the second example, the Khilafah, the succession of the Prophet. That's why don't, a lot of people don't look at it. Umar ibn al-Khattab is narrated to say that I am jealous or envious of Ali ibn Abi Talib for three occasions. What are these three occasions? He says the first and foremost is that he brought victory at Khaybar. Khaybar was a very pivotal point in the Muslims' time frame, timeline. Because it was what? Because the Jews had everything closed off. The Muslims tried and tried to conquer. No one would bring victory. Then the Prophet ﷺ had the statement, Tomorrow I will give a banner that for, to a man that loves me and Allah. And Allah and myself, the Prophet of Islam says, love him. Remember at that time, Ali ibn Abi Talib had a problem with his eye. He couldn't fight. So everyone's looking around saying, it won't be Ali ibn Abi Talib again, surely. Ali ibn Abi Talib has an infection in his eye. He can't be the one that the Prophet will give the banner to. In which the third day comes, the Prophet takes from his saliva, as the narration says, and puts it on the eye of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he's cured. Ali is narrated to say, I've never seen with such clarity after that incident that the Prophet wiped his blessed hands with the saliva on his eyes. وَلَهُ فِي يَوْمِ خَيْبَرَ فَتَكَاتٌ كَبُرَتْ مَنْظَرًا عَلَى مَنْ رَآهَا يَوْمَ قَالَ النَّبِي إِنِّي أُعْطِي رَايَتِي لَيْثَهَا وَحَامِي حِمَاهَا فَشْرَأَبَّتْ أَعْنَاقَ كُلِّ فَرِيقٍ لِيَرَوْا أَيَّ مَاجِدٍ يُعْطَاهَا فَدَعَا أَيْنَ وَارِثُ الْعِلْمِ وَالْحِلْمِ مُجِيرُ الْأَنَامِ مِنْ بَأْسَاهَا أين ذو النجدة الذي نودعته في السماوات مروعة لباها That was Ali ibn Abi Talib فأتاه الوصي أرمد عين فسقاها من ريقه فشفاها وأزال بابها بقوة بأس لو حمته الأفلاك منه لأفناها صلوات He says, number one, I was jealous on that occasion because he brought victory at Khaybar. He says, the second of which I was jealous of him from is because he was married to Fatima al-Zahra. The narration states to us throughout history that there was no one left in the Arabian Peninsula except they asked the hand of the daughter of the Prophet of Islam. And you remember the Prophet isn't the one that's going to say yes or no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have that it said, if Ali ibn Abi Talib did not exist, there was no one that had the caliber, the characteristics or personality that can even try to go towards Fatima al-Zahra and ask for a hand in marriage. But when Zahra would not have anyone of her equal. Number two, number three, he says that the saying or the hadith in which 
the Prophet says about Ali ibn Abi Talib, that's the third thing that I was envious from, in which the Prophet says, Ali, anta minni bi manzilati Harun min Musa illa annahu la nabiya ba'd. He says, that's the third occasion which I was envious from him. That was the third occasion. And the Prophet, subhanAllah, tomorrow, I've got the signal, and the, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll analyze in more depth the times in which the Prophet of Islam used this particular quote to make him in the position that he is in, to tell people after him that he is my successor, he is the one that's after me, he is myself, and I leave him behind. And tomorrow we'll discuss an aspect, brothers and sisters, and I'll repeat this same thing I'm about to say tomorrow. Because we'll look at it in more detail and I end on this. But remember the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because we're going to discuss it throughout these nights. The last thing I'm about to say is remember. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Adam. Until Khatam al-Anbiya Muhammad. رحم الله من ذكر القائم Thank you everyone that have me forward إن شاء الله just to end on this note that from Adam alayhi afdal salati was salam until now our prophets, 124,000 prophets with their books, with their scriptures, with everything in the Quran, with the prophet 11 years one place, 12 years in another, everything, all this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, the religion was not completed until what? Until the Till Allah tells Rasulullah, take the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib and tell the people, Al-Yawm, Akmal Tulakum Deenakum. Look at the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I'd leave you on that and let you ponder over it. And inshallah, we'll take it up tomorrow again when we discuss this in more detail. I end on this, brothers and sisters, and inshallah, uh, we want to pray to Allah on these blessed nights to accept our prayers, to accept our istighfar, and to allow us to seek closeness towards Allah. And He does not veil from us the, these blessed nights. He doesn't veil from us our dua. He doesn't veil anything that we go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our actions. We pray to Allah on this note with a surah al mubarakah al fatiha but before it, three of your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.